Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Super License F1 podcast. My name's Rodney. And my name is Zach. It's another episode coming to you behind the veil of the COVID-19 pandemic. Are you still alive, Zach, or have you caught the fever? <laughs> I've caught the the isolation fever, man. I sure <laughs> love being at home all the time. It's great. These four walls, <laughs> at least there's still four of them, I suppose. Uh, it's never it's... been a better time to love being at home, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm... I, Every time I feel like, no, this is fine, this is fine, I'm more and more I'm getting to like, God, I really miss some very specific things that I didn't think mm. I would miss. To yeah, the point where wrong. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying not to consume media that involves things that I personally would like to do. Like, I get annoyed at a show where it's like, oh, look at them all at a restaurant. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at this guy. Walking into the supermarket and having a having a chocolate bar and sitting on a bench. What an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Feel it. So yeah. It's and I'm missing Formula One. I'm missing I'm missing sport generally, but I'm I'm really missing Formula One. Uh and I it's it's like dueling problems. It's it's a it's a real I was gonna say Sophie's choice, but I haven't seen that film. But I, I really don't want <laughs> it's nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I really don't want the sport like Formula One to come back and put people's lives at risk, but I really, for selfish reasons, want the sport to come back so that I can enjoy mm. it with you and, and my friends and yeah, online true. and just get some kind of escapism. Because I've spoken about this before, that sport for me delivers this massive parasocial thing. Like, I, I don't really get much out of sport when I'm not watching it live. Like, and I don't mean in person, like at the mm. race, but I mean like experiencing something with literally millions of other people at the same time has a real it really ticks a box in my in my personality need for some reason there is something there that is so involved that there is literally nowhere to have that right now other than like getting on big zoom calls or like mm, doing yeah. like live instagram lives and just doing things with other people all at once like watching national press conferences are almost like that but <laughs> i didn't know how much i would miss that until it's now been how long is it? I mean, we haven't had a Formula One race this year. You know, it's been, when was the last race? November? So it's been almost seven months since we've mm. had a Formula One race. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's I, crazy. I, uh, we have an old mutual uh, acquaintance who tweeted something the other day that he was chasing down a live stream for a baseball match that was happening in South Korea, apparently. And uh, oh. very, very desperate for sport, this man. <laughs> and, uh, willing to watch absolutely anything that's happening. He's like, just show me yeah. something. Someone competing against someone else in something. I'll watch anything. But anyway, Zach, that's enough crazy talk. Uh, we do have a job to do this week. We're here to record another commentary track for... Dare to swear, this is season two, episode four <laughs> of Drive to Survive. I d wouldn't. How amazing would it be if next season they say we're announcing a name change to the for series three? <laughs> It'll be called Dare to Swear. That'd be incredible, and I want royalties if that happens. Um, but yeah, this is giving listeners a chance to settle into their couch, uh, pull up their remote, and start getting ready to hit play on that right episode, season two, episode four called Dark Days. Uh, Zach's going to count you down when we're going to start it. If you start it at the same time, hey, what do you know? You might just have a fun time with us. Um, any <laughs> last words, Zach? <laughs> any last words? Oh, last words. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I can't... I feel like this is a good episode. And look, if you're... You don't have to be on your couch. You could be in your bed, watching it on your phone. I don't know how audio tracks work. If you're... Just, can you run the podcast at the same time? That's <laughs> what I mean. Yeah, yeah, as long as you're fine. listening. I guess what you could be doing is streaming the podcast to your TV while you watch mm. Drive to Survive on your phone. You could be doing that. But look, yeah. I don't want to tell you how to live your life. Yeah. Get two sets of AirPods. Put one in one ear, one in the other. One's connected to one <laughs> device, one's connected idea. to another. <laughs> yeah. All of these kinds of things. All right. All right. I'm going to count us down. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. And we're into it. We're off to the races. Oh. I don't know if you've listened wow. back to any of these um, recordings that we've done. Some of them are like, yeah, uh, we didn't describe enough what we were looking at or whatever. <laughs> but this <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Well, you can you can lust over this car and describe it for us. Well, I always think about that, right? Because the idea is that people are watching it too. So <laughs> That's the idea, yes. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting a bit of a, what, a, a recap of... Uh, lots of different teams. Uh, how do they, we know that this episode is going to be a much bigger look at how do teams function overall as opposed to just specific people or drivers. And more Mercedes, finally, more Mercedes. Lots of tense faces for some reason at Mercedes. Yeah. 
Does everybody have to wear a white shirt every day at Mercedes? Because that's literally what everybody's wearing. It looks a bit cult-like, doesn't it? Yeah. It is a thing that they do at Mercedes where they have instituted um, mindfulness practices. So, um, I mean, obviously, it's they're reaping the benefits of it, but they're trying to reduce the stress of their workers by getting them to forcing them, basically, to do mindfulness exercises. So, hmm. um, you know, it's a high level they're operating on. Yeah. Toto Wolf. No, Toto Wolf. He's so intense. I feel like this sort of background chill EDM style music is playing. Like he, he like he carries around a boombox that just plays that. That's his personal soundtrack. <laughs> I feel like Toto would be the most fun. Like, because he's so intense. Like, whatever he's doing is taking all his focus. That's why he, like, mm. thumps the desk during races. Because he's so involved in the thing. And so even then, saying, like, uh, the high five to, to Daniel Ricardo. Fun, he's saying when it's time to have fun, he, he, he turns it up to 11. Yeah, it's fun yeah he only has 11. There is no... Mm. He doesn't have a dial. Right, right. Yeah, maybe that's why they're so successful at Mercedes. Not the only reason, but just they're, very, they're incredibly focused. Everyone who watches Formula One just for the crashes, they didn't listen to anything that we just said for the last 20 <laughs> seconds because it, it was a crash party. Lots yeah, of a lot of Mickey louder. Yeah, because he's showing how, it's almost like we're setting it up how important he is yeah, to the team. Yeah, exactly. Right, we wouldn't have had the success without Nicky. Boy, we'd be really we'd be really up the creek if he wasn't around. Oh. <laughs> mm. It is good though. <clears throat> this is part of what we wanted from uh, Drive to Survive was was uh, you know don't just recap the races, right? Don't just recap the results. Tell the stories. They're different things. Yeah. And this is yeah. what this this series does best. Yeah, exactly. It's a great little dedication to Nikki Ladder this portion as well because we've seen you know everybody who's you know seen a bit of Nikki Ladder have seen a lot of this footage before, yeah. but seeing it all pulled together and reflected on by Toto. I wish there was a like a life, like you know how to do your life by Nikki Lauda, like the the living <laughs> life, the Nikki way. Like it just seems so straightforward. And this is that's what Will Buxton is saying there, right? That that, that you know that Nikki Lauda can just do that. It's like no, just do the thing that makes it better mm. or more, yeah. or faster, you know, or more safe, whatever it is. Yeah, do all the good things. Don't do all the bad things. Yeah, focus on the it, stuff it that It seems that simple, but we've seen what happens at Haas when you do bad things and don't do the good yeah. things. Oh, oh, boy. That is an early Wheel Buxton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hit it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to the fans. Thank the fans. To the best fans. Oh. Nikki's the best man. That this is the one of the most genuine relationships in Formula One, or was like mm. Lewis Hamilton and Nikki Lauda just have utter. I mean, it must be love for each other. Like Nikki desperately wanted him to come yeah, to Mercedes, I can and as Toto that. said before, that was the reason why he came. Yeah, and Lewis desperately needed a um, oh, like a mentor that he yeah. that he fully respected. So true. So true. And yeah, you're totally right. I feel like, I mean, Nicky Loudon didn't have a fake relationship with anyone. He definitely told everyone what he, exactly what he thought of them. Lewis Hamilton, though, I would say maybe not as much. And so there's no doubt that the relationship that they had was 100% genuine. Mm. God, this is so sad. Yeah, this was tough. Especially... um. I mean, at the Monaco Grand Prix, a Grand Prix that had so much history, for, for it to be the next race, um, I mean, just his ghost haunts at every corner that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see even the young drivers who were like, they weren't even born, you know, a decade after he retired, but you can still see what it means to them. Yeah. I mean, and, and any death around Formula One is, is always tricky for mm. the young drivers to kind of work with. Um, because it's not something that they're really nearly as used to as some of the older drivers were. And I know that yeah, Nicky Lauda yeah. didn't die in a car accident Nikki. that year, but, you know, it was it hit the entire sport at once. Um, yeah. And everybody had such 
it's such a special relationship with Nicky Lauda because of the way he was involved in the sport. Like, he was kind of everybody. He was helpful and direct with everybody, but he was this special advisor at Mercedes. And it's only really emerged over the last couple of years how important he has been to their success. Yeah, no kidding. I love all the red hats. They're outstanding. Yeah. And you know that someone was given the task of, you know, get me 50 red hats with Nicky written on them tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, what the, you know what a logistical nightmare that is, but it happened. Hmm. Yeah, that would be a special... That would be a special win to have and to dedicate yeah. to him. <laughs> Yeah, Toto says the right things. Yeah, I mean, that race, yeah. Hamilton was just like, I just can't, I won't be able to do this. Mm. You know, it must be so difficult to kind of push him on at those, ti- at those times. Yeah, it's his own worst enemy because he wants it so bad. Um, yeah. when, when it potentially slips away, uh, it amplifies in his head how bad it is. Correct. That's an interesting take, out? right? That was that was always something that I felt uh, not very sympathetic or sensitive to talk about the impact on Mercedes at the time. But mm. you know, six months later, that's a very fair question. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Um, I mean, the same way that. I don't know. It's not really fair to say they were successful because of him, but, um, you know, with, with, you know, thousands of people contributing to success and when they, they always talk about that. And even Lewis Hamilton always talks about that. This, this is the team. We win and lose together. The success comes from all of us pulling together in the same direction. But, um, you know, Nikki's the, the quarterback steering things. So yes, they might all be facing in the right direction and they might continue without him needing to call the shots. They might still, uh, you know, they might still have a few wins, but uh, someone else has to rise up now. So, yeah, I just love that interaction. That was something that yeah, I, talking I almost wrote down at the time. Is that is that Gunter Steiner is just so like Toto? Man, we could just why don't we never speak German together? Like you can yeah. just talk to me in German. It's fine. <laughs> like it's just this French friendly ribbing. It's okay for us to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I need subtitles on all interactions where I don't speak the language <laughs> because look at the gold I'm missing out on. I know. <sighs> don't ask me about Nikki. Don't ask me about Nikki. No. <laughs> I can't remember what I said at the time about the, the different team kit. I think I would have said, I love it as an idea, but God, if it blows up in your face, you look so bad. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's a great talking point on Thursday. It's just not so great. Yeah. And, uh, no, I always other like the ideal I, circumstances. Yeah. You, you, uh, yeah, you should just do a couple of things that head in that direction, like, like Red Bull do with the lederhosen race suits. Like, they only do that. But they hmm. don't dress everybody up as some insane way. Or just do it on Saturday, but not Sunday, or you know, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Even just do. Yeah, exactly. Saturday would be great. Just do it. Yeah, because qualifying is not going to go. Qualifying go is expected to go weird ways, you know. But don't do it on race day. Be professionals on race day. And you can see that this just doesn't. That Toto does things to eleven, as you said. So once the decision can be made, he really leans into it. It's like, okay, yes, this is fun. We are going mm. to have fun with this. But I don't think that jived very well with, like, but this is also incredibly professional. So I'm capable, as Toto Wolf, to hold those two ideas in my mind, that it can both yeah. be fun and incredibly diligent. But I don't think you trust anybody else to be like that. I, yeah, he maybe hopes he can. <clears throat> hopes he can, but maybe he can't. It is encouraging to me to see all the drivers actually in these meetings, putting in those hours. And you sort of hear about them doing it, but you kind of assume, yeah, right, I bet you don't actually do it, though. But, mm. yeah, they probably didn't get enough respect 
um, for this aspect of what they do. Cause you kind of think like, well, yeah, all the engineers build the car, the, 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 the professionals and the specialists all tune it. You tell them, I'll oh, make it faster in this corner. And they, they tweak a hundred million things behind the scenes and just do it for you. But they have to get all this stuff right as well. It's not just about getting out there and putting your foot down. Yeah. But I hadn't even thought about the idea that, yeah, they would pull up the telemetry with the visuals of the race. So you can be like, look, this is where you were on the track doing this. And look, mm. we can see the car is skidding around here and we've got yeah, the telemetry geez. data and all the other data that tells us this. How did it feel at that moment? You <laughs> know, that, that would be so useful you know, to I, be able to go yeah. through in that detail. There's nowhere to hide. And I've, I've, nev- I've, I've had that exact thought before. How would I react if someone was like... We told you to go faster in that corner and you didn't. You, you just you can't turn around and say, no, I did. I did. They, they, <laughs> no, they know no, you didn't. No, you didn't. It's like, no, nah, mate, you didn't. That's pressure. <laughs> you know how you that told us the tires were really bad there. No, they weren't. <laughs> yes, exactly. We told you to break two meters later. You broke two meters earlier. What the hell? Mm. I like this interaction um, with Valtteri, like the idea that, yeah, like we've just got off this point of talking about Nicky Lauda, one of the greatest drivers and, and driving forces in Formula One and at Mercedes. And then we have Lewis Hamilton, the most talented driver each generation, <laughs> the most winningest driver of yes. this generation, probably, if not the best driver in my lifetime, like within the top three, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Valtteri Bottas is also there. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, that other guy. I guess we should talk to him sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Well, get out there and win, fella. Yeah, I mean, he is number two, and he, I mean, there's going to be preference. There is preference to Lewis Hamilton, not to Valtteri Bottas. Mm. Oh, boy. How much did this cost? (laughs) Well, I mean, it's a good point. Because everything must have been customly tailored, right? It's not just a matter of, what are you, 42, 44? Yeah. You, you guys switch suits. Every, yeah, everyone exactly. would have had to be measured, and all of these outfits would have had to have been custom made, right? I'm guessing so. Or at least Don't sourced like, in a way that, yeah. like, at least for the hot upper management, at least Toto, yes. Um, I also, Toto Wolf's caravan is, like, his RV is off the chain nice. <laughs> Don't really like the suspenders over the over the logos though yeah no they should have he should have just worn a white shirt but they're not allowed to Mm. (laughs) I love the Mercedes like like uh, uh, like immersive ride that's happening in the background of the crowd (laughs) and you can hear it like chunking around (laughs) chunking Don't I want to want, don't want to hear the words anyone's caught a virus don't want to hear it no that's a weird thing to say oh yeah because Lewis is sick right he's got a massive mm-hmm. fever but he's there yeah this is, I mean, it went through the paddock I, mean, I think mm. he was one of about five drivers that had it at some point and yeah it comes at the wrong time for him. Which is weird. Because oh, it does it. It does qualifying sick. set the grid for Sunday, Will Buxton. <laughs> what an insight. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck you and the horse you rode in on, Will. Jesus. <laughs> There's someone out there that didn't know that. <laughs> if you're I four mean... episodes deep into Drive to Survive, <laughs> what is happening? Where are you must like how have you watched the first three episodes? Because how do you know anything about and how anything works? How would you set so up confusing. that qualifying is important? Like the Netflix producers say to you, Zach, what we need is a little grab where you we underline how important qualifying is. What do you say? You say that by getting pole, there's a much higher chance of winning. And that might not be as obvious to people, but like qualifying sets the grid. It's like cars go around in a circle and the one that comes, the one that does the laps before anybody else wins. Like that's, it's so fundamental. Like, it it would be more useful to say, like, you know, it's so important to qualify really high up the grid because there's an 85% chance that you'll finish in the podium places. Like, give us some hmm. data. Give us a reason why qualifying is so stressful because the statement that it sets the grid for tomorrow doesn't inherently say why the grid position is so important. Okay. Sorry, that's my that's my, my uh, copy editing. Like, this doesn't <laughs> tell, actually tell you anything. 
It's like saying that, like, ah, uh, the, uh, the boiling water makes the coffee hot. It's like, yeah, but why is the <laughs> coffee being hot good? Why is it important to have hot water? Yeah. Go. I loved that livery, the like old school Mercedes white at the front of the of the Mercedes cars. I thought it was awesome. That guy, that that guy wearing the headband in the Red Bull garage. Would mm-hmm. you would you wear a headband? Did you ever play, wear a headband when you play basketball? Not a headband kind of guy. No. Um, what's the closest? He used to go ten pin bowling. Had a little wrist brace. That's the closest I've had okay. to some kind of adornment. Yeah, I've noticed that I I've been whilst I've been running, I have something about having longer hair right now because I can't get my hair cut because the hairdressers aren't uh, open and I'm not course. doing it at home. I'm not getting involved. The I get more sweat <laughs> into my eyes. Maybe maybe it's because I'm not allowed to touch my face Ooh, really either. You're not meant to be like out there hell. touching your face. Yeah. Uh, um, There's not to do yeah, with the show. <laughs> Could, couldn't you just wear sunglasses or something and just wouldn't that do it? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, maybe. I don't know. Do you, how sweaty do you think the F1 drivers get in the car? I suppose they're wearing the the fireproof, like, balaclava thing, so that absorbs a lot of sweat. Yeah, their suits are made out of, like, chamois, basically. That's why when mm. they get out, they weigh them. It's to weigh how much sweat is in the suit, because they, oh. most people don't know this, but drivers uh, put on three kilos every race. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Will, Will Buxton to explain that. <laughs> yeah. uh, boom, boom, boom. That's seven years of podcasting coming through, folks. That's so straightforward from Lewis Hamilton, but that's exactly how I think of him. Like, if I just mm-hmm. work harder than everybody else, I should be able to be way better. And yeah. that's he, he always sounds like on the radio on the race. He's like, they're like, could you get more? And he's like, maybe. Yes, I think I probably can. <laughs> and if he believes he can't, that's why it's always amazing when he says things like, I don't think I can do this any better. I tend to believe him. <laughs> but he does whinge a lot. Um, but, you know, he, he's the guy. He's made this Mercedes, even when it's looked really good, he's makes it look incredible a lot of the time. Mm. Oh, dear. Silence on the radio. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. Pause for a bit too long there. Yeah. There's a there's yeah. There's something about being calm when you're the technician on the radio, like the key engineer, but also, like, don't leave people hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Those pregnant pauses. He probably had to, like, um, when Lewis asked for the time, he probably had to pick up his monocle and just check the, you know, (laughs) it takes time. It adds tense. Pull the time piece out of the breast pocket. (laughs) Yes. Be so good if they stopped using telemetry that weekend. They're just using stopwatches. (laughs) (laughs) Pulling out their (laughs) opera glasses while they go down the pit straight, watching them go past. Mercedes is so dominant. I reckon they'd still be able to win if they had no telemetry. Yeah, that would be interesting to to see just like turn off all the screens you guys just it's just you in the car go and see what you can do yeah i i would let you still have radio with the team back but that's all like we've seen it a couple of times i'm sure that there was a race last year maybe nico hockenberg lost telemetry to back yeah, to a few years ago race for a bit yeah and they were just working on radio year. i don't know something like that it happens every year there's some driver who's like uh can't hear you guys <laughs> mm. uh, check one two check one two check check but even the team's losing data back to the garage is interesting Mm. Mm. Which Another is pole, and he's a happy man. Was that Susie Wolf? I didn't recognize her. I so Sim. usually see her in like race gear and stuff. I didn't. I think it I was. Know, I didn't think it was. Maybe it was. Oh. I don't see her with her hair up very often, like in a, and also in fifty stress. That's kind of what I mean. Yes. <laughs> I like that hat color on Valtteri. That kind of what would you, what would you call that color? Stone, stone, I think, is what stone, I would call okay. that. Stone. Hmm. You could say beige. <laughs> the flat cap surely isn't in anymore, right? Other than like like the the flat brimmed like truck cap style that Valtteri has that's, on doesn't seem to be as fashionable anymore. That's interesting because Lewis has never rocked the flat cap, has he? Not that I can think mm. of. He's always done the curve. I think a, he's always had a slight curve, but not the 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 big curve degree. seems to be back in as of midway through last year. Oh, is it? Yeah, I would say so. It's got is he sponsored by Gran Turismo? No, that's a is that what that GT brand, was. Uh, mm. I don't know. Uh. Don't know. I was going to say it's a good curve. No rooftop bend there. It's it's a solid curve. No. 
No. I don't think... Are you a, you're a curve, aren't you? I'm a curve. I've always been a curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some curve. I, I Sometimes I go a bit too far and it sort of pinches on the sides of my temples and I have uh, to uncurve it a bit. But yeah, that's when you know you've gone too far. I'd love to be chauffeur driven around. Like, Toto's, Toto's just sitting in his car right now being driven back, you know, to I his mean, hotel or whatever from the track. I've got good news for you, mate, because Uber exists. Uh, Your dream can come true. We can make it come true. But could you guarantee that the driver knows as much about Formula One as Toto's driver does? Ah, I love this. Can't guarantee that. Toto's describing how uh, Nicky Lada would get in the car and make all the changes because they would drive back, they would drive everywhere (laughs) together. But he would just align all the dials and gauges and Mm. air vents and everything. I love that. As he's not driving from the track as much as he's just getting driven back to his little caravan. Well, maybe that was the next day and he's getting driven in. I don't know. That's bigger than my house, that that place. Yeah. It's bigger than my flat in London. Definitely bigger than my flat. <laughs> my oh, the race happens on Sunday. Of, uh, yeah. And it's raining. Bad luck. Ah, oh, those 1950s umbrellas or what? I wonder if they had to like eat 1950s food as well, like baked beans on toast and spam and stuff. <laughs> Good atmosphere for a rainy day. It is. But do you just go say on, that Go on, Zach. Way? Put your boot in. Go on. <laughs> Have a go. I, but I believe that. He's right. That's something that we You're would in... say on the show. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, you better be careful because someone's going to go through and pull out all the clips where we've said the most obvious shit. <laughs> all the cliches. <laughs> Sunday is the day that counts. There's no points for qualifying. <laughs> no, yeah, no points on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, I just feel, I feel like, like I'm getting wet. Oh, Christian Horner, every conversation, it's he's working, like he just, oh, that seems like such work, every conversation mm. that Christian Horner has. dun dun dun, dun. <laughs> I think Christian Horner really thinks that Red Bull is way better than they actually are. Like, he lives in that 2010 to 2013, 14 world. Yeah, exactly. He talks that talk. Um, Yeah. This is where, if you know a bit about the season, um, it really falls flat because you just know that that's empty. You know there's nothing behind that. Yeah. Yeah. As if, like, what happened to Mercedes this weekend was not down to Red Bull and Christian Horner's master plan to put pressure on them. Like, that's just not what happened. This no. race or the whole season. Yeah, it does. I mean, the show does this kind of thing where it is to make it look like every team is kind of competing against each other every weekend. It's just not the case in Formula One. Mm. Um, I was listening to a different sports podcast about something similar. What, and, um, what have I, know, I told I know, you about that? I know. Uh, but America, most American sports... Uh, uh, kind of regulated in a way that every team kind of has a shot every season. Yeah, there are playoffs, yeah. there are conferences, there are spending yeah, caps, right. basketball, baseball, the MLS and soccer, all of this kind of stuff that, that you don't get this inherent dominance of like mm. the same two teams in the Super Bowl every year and the same team winning the Super Bowl every year. You don't really get that. Um, and Formula One is nothing like that. <laughs> it, it really is like you find a bit of dominance, especially in my lifetime. You can pretty much hold on to that dominance for three years if you just keep iterating. Mm. It's it's kind of insane. And maybe the part of this show, the, the Drive to Survive, being made essentially for a US audience a lot of the time is to make it look like it's more competitive than it actually is because that would be the expectation. Maybe. Um I mean, the interesting thing about the F1 audience in the US is, you know, they have to get up at stupid o'clock every weekend mm. to watch it. So it's the hardcore people. And, um, I mean, they're used to motor racing. They understand what it's like. But, I mean, yeah. Formula One is just that little bit different. So it's like you've really got to want to watch it to Oof. go to the effort because there's there's mo- motor racing being served up in a perfect time zone for you with familiar people to you. So, yeah. boy, you really got to be an outsider to want to get into it. Anyway, speaking of getting into it, boy, getting mm. into the walls, getting into the into the wet lines, it's all yeah. going going off here. Yeah. 
It's a, it's. I mean, there's a lot to talk about with a wet race because it's not just a great leveler, but you really do see how how good drivers are and how little control they're in. And a lot of people do say that, like, you know, maybe Formula One should be more on the edge like this all the time. The cars should be mm. difficult to drive. Well, they probably shouldn't be this difficult. And I also worry about just saying, oh, if we make the cars a little bit more difficult to drive, then everything will just be better. Like, uh, that might be part of the recipe, but it's not. It's not the meal. No, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that section of the track. Literally, just yeah. it was just such such like three mil of standing water <laughs> that you would just. It's the most famous through. part of that track now, and it's not even yeah. actually on the track. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Ah. The. Oh. He was doing okay up to that point too, because that's the other thing about wet races is that every driver thinks they have a shot. Mm. It's the great level because they do. Because <laughs> it's as this proves, if they do. <laughs> this, everything's fine. Uh, no, uh, oh sh- no, no, it's not oh good. No, oh no. Okay, I can save this. I can save it. I can save it. Ah. I love that the like. I mean, he does kind of right. He manages like the the he does sand pit I mean, does just enough. Although he comes yeah. into the pits here and was like, he didn't go around the bollard. You're not really meant to be coming into the pits. Wow, he didn't have much choice there, did he? But I mean, no. you know. Between retiring and taking a penalty, you probably take the penalty. And they probably would have told him to pull into the pits or stop racing anyway, because it's an unsafe. Yes. I've never seen the front wing like that. Like, it usually comes off all the way, or like it's a little bit crunchy, but not like just half Mm. of it gone. I mean... I love hearing the the chat between the... Yeah. We never hear that. I love it. I mean, it wasn't a great weekend for them, and this is part of what went wrong. But, I mean, at the same time, no team would be ready for this. No one would have foreseen no. this. It's just not a thing. So, yeah. I mean, give them a little bit of credit. Sure, it was it was a shambles, and they made it worse. But it was always going to be bad. Yeah. You just have to work out the best thing at the best time. Like, it could have been way worse. Imagine yeah. if you'd gone out with the wrong tyres on. Like the and like a, a, a imagine if you gone out an inters and on one wheel and wets on the others. Yeah, Ugh. really hard for Lewis because he knows that he dropped it, and then he knows that the team let him down as well. It's like who who do I where can I turn for something to yeah. go right? Yeah, Give me and something, he would have some someone like Nicky Lauda would have here. been really good to help That's him exactly navigate right. that situation. Get Nicky on the get Nicky on the radio and say it's very simple. Just keep yeah. driving and do your best. And yeah, yeah, he would have been in a better mindset. Exactly. But the race, I mean, the wind might have still been on for all because the way this race well, went, you know, well, it, it, <laughs> it was, was ridiculous. That's the thing. Like the fact that he managed to survive that crash into the wall, he but drove nobody to else had really. You know, yeah, like, and survive is probably too strong a word, but he came out of the, out of the, <laughs> the kitty litter. Um, and, you know, it's incredible. Oh. See you later. That's two. <laughs> Let's not do that again. Mm. But that's I'm the, trying. that's the sort of thing that Nikki could have gotten on the radio and said, keep a cool head. Yeah. And this is also the thing as well that, um, that Mercedes can do um, is that they that Lewis can go out there and push really hard because he's can get race wins and there's so many points. Whereas if he was mid table, mm. it's like shit. These three points are really important. Don't go out and push. Just kind of hold station. Mm. Yeah, which is what I he's saying. Toto Wolff saying the exact opposite thing to what I think Lewis Hamilton is doing. Yeah. Lewis yeah. Hamilton is like, no, I need to win. And Toto Wolff's like, yeah, but everyone. a point would be good. Could you just finish, though? That would be good. Because Lewis is thinking about the interview at the end where they're like, man, you, you, you made a mistake and it looks bad. But boy, the way you came back and overtook 10 more cars, genius. Yeah. Well, it's because he's aspiring to that because that's what Nicky Lauda mm-hmm. would do. Nicky Lauda wouldn't bring it home for three points. If it, as long as it was safe, he'd be trying to win. Hmm. And Valtteri Bottas, I mean, do you, I mean, is there a less, this is when Valtteri is just not as useful to Mercedes is that he can't force wins. It just doesn't seem to be in his nature. I don't know why. He just doesn't, maybe he just doesn't take the same risks. The intensity isn't there. 
Yeah. Oh, that's so I mean, scary, though, seeing it from that shot, th- fl- being mm. flung backwards into the wall, like just watching Valtteri Bottas land in the wall, that whole shot from looking yeah. at him. Because you watch him <sighs> react and you know yeah. he's truly just lost it and he's yep. panicking. Um, I mean, we've said it a dozen times before, but yeah, Nico Rosberg pushed Lewis and was so much closer to Lewis, um, you know, and people didn't really give him credit for being as close as he was. And certainly mm. no one would, no one's arguing that Rick Rosberg was better than, than Lewis, but he was there. He was with him. And, uh, on his day, you know, sometimes if <laughs> Volteri can do it, most days mm. he's a bit behind. I think Nico Rosberg knew that if he was going to drive by the numbers, if he was going to, if Nico Rosberg was like, no, I'm going to beat you through sheer, like, compete to like 99% of my ability every race weekend, mm. I will not make a mistake. Now, I might not be yeah. as fast as you or take as many risks as you, but I'm not, I'm not going to lose this. You're going to lose it. And I'm, and I'm mm. going to win yeah. by your mistakes. Like, it's yeah. the tennis player who creates, you know, that, that basically never makes an unforced error. It's like, I'm just going to keep putting the ball back over and I'll see what you can do with it. <laughs> Whereas Valtteri, yeah. you, you think that consistency's there, but when it is there, he's not, he doesn't, he's not close enough to Lewis or not good enough for when he does drive without risk, he finishes third or fourth because mm. there are people like Max Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, Charles Leclerc, um, you know, in the past, other drivers as well who could really push you. And when they drove out of their skin, there's enough other drivers on the grid who, when they drive out of their skin, can beat you. And um, that's a real problem for Valtteri Bottas. And then when he does try to push it, it doesn't go right often enough. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Christian Horner's plan works. Red Bull won. Mm, so, you know, it was all, it. it was all prophesied. Yep. Tough day at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't yes. quite have the same way with words as Gunter Steiner does when he's swearing. <laughs> he he warned him so he's wormed his way into daring to swear there. He was like, it's a crap fucking shit. Bad Because it's what all coming say? from his head. With Gunter Steiner, it comes from the <laughs> bottom of his gut and it just comes yeah. out of his mouth. Bah! But with, with with Toto, he's like, What's the best word? What are the, what's the best series of words? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> he's got such broad shoulders. He's a unit, for sure. He's a big unit. He's a fit guy. He's having smoothies for lunch, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great question from the journalist. Amazing. It's having Netflix here, take that. Just nailed it. Just nailed it. Also, the lackadaisical, like, position of the guy. He's mm. like one arm back over the chair next to him. Couldn't look like more of an anorak if he tried. <sighs> I'll do that, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. No, it was a fucking shit crap bullshit day. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Mm. Go on, Toto. There are people who take these things in with grace and who can turn a, 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 a fair but barbed question from the media yeah. into something that is like, look... Uh, yeah, it was a bad day. You point out exactly right. I'm not going to feel embarrassed, though. You know, this is part of what we do. And we, you know, you can go to some of the rhetoric there and say, you know, we win together, we lose together, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It was tough on everybody. But no, he was too easy to poke there, Toto Wolf. And, you know, I think he was, it was, the question was spot on. How embarrassing is it? Toto Wolf felt incredibly embarrassed. <laughs> We're getting some amazing, uh, amazing insights here as well. So, yeah, mm. let's acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, Literally, like, almost behind closed doors access. This is incredible. How lucky must the guys have felt who were shooting this? Yeah. Seeing Lewis go in and basically mea culpa and be like, hey, I fucked it up with to Toto Wolf. Incredible. And we've seen, you know, we've seen how hurt and broken Toto is, but he's still there to prop up his man. Yeah, and trying to do stuff, I think, I'm sure he would have been thinking about what Nicky Lauda would have said in that position as well. Yeah, like, the thing is, yeah. like, Toto Wolff isn't a Formula One driver. He doesn't know the reset action that he's describing to Lewis Hamilton. He's never felt that, but he knows it's something that Nicky probably would have said. And Nicky would have told him, he's like, yeah, Lewis, you, you made a mistake there. You fucked up. But that happens. It's mm. important to get back and keep going. And I could see what you were trying to do. And you can tell that that's kind of it's missing. There is, you know. Yeah, he's saying exactly, exactly what you just that. said. 
it's from the mouth. I mean, of if, you, if, if you hadn't already seen this, I would be saying you're a genius. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> she did it these in future, but yeah. This is the low point of their like last seven years. Like, I mean, mm. you could talk about, you know, you could talk about Rosberg and Hamilton crashing into each other and stuff like that. But at least that was like, there were positives to be taken from that. Yeah. Was yeah kind, was that the, was rock was, bottom for them. Yeah. It was the ultimate hubris. Like, hey, look how confident yes, yes, you think you are. You I'm think saying. you're the king of this sport. And look, look at the the normal thing that, that tripped you up, yeah. that every team feels. You're not gods amongst men. You're just a normal Formula One team who's maybe <laughs> better resource and a bit luckier. Anyway, that is anyway, the, the end of- I was going to say, of, it's time uh, to wrap Dennis, it up. We're seeing uh, season two, episode that four. clip of Charlotte Claire. You get, you get to see that clip of Charlotte Claire quite a lot, so uh, mm. you can wrap it up there. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching along with us. We do have, to finish off the show, the usual super quiz. Uh, I think it's my turn to get into it. So let's have a little bit of music. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of this, some questions. We will accept a couple of questions. Should one only win one? Would one want to have won that one in round one? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Zach, um... I uh, wasn't sure what I was going to do for a quiz this week. Again, normally we sort of look to the race and pull out a little thread of something and turn that into a quiz. Um, I basically uh, did something I haven't done for a little while is to go on to Reddit and I scrolled through the old, our old friend, r slash Formula One. So this week's quiz is called Things I Learned from r slash Formula One. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a mishmash of things, uh, things that I learned that I didn't know. And obviously Reddit is sort of an aggregator, so... They're pulling bits and pieces from everywhere, but it all comes together in this wonderful place, in this wonderful platform that we all love. And I thought what I would do is just collect one, two, three, four, five little questions. Mm -hmm. These are tidbits. These are factoids. Actually, I learned recently that factoid means something that's actually not true, that sounds really? true. So these are not factoids. Um, oh. these, are, these, are, these are tidbits. These are little um, nuggets of mm, interest. Uh, all F1 related, I'm going to throw a question to you. You're going to tell me what it is. These are things I learned from r slash Formula One. Are you ready? I'm ready. So one of the things that I saw posted to Reddit was an old clip from 1995 featuring Nigel Mansell and the McLaren car launch from that year. And the thing that I learned, Zach, that I want you to tell me is what did I? what was exposed about Nigel Mansell from that car launch? What was exposed about Nigel Mansell? What did we learn about from... Nigel Mansell and the car? At the 1995 McLaren car launch. Or that he didn't fit in it? Hey, spot on. He did not fit into the car. He was too big. <laughs> <laughs> That's one That's thing I remember. So He's a big guy. <laughs> He's a bit of a big guy. Car, a little bit too small. Oh. Um, good. Well, you're off to a flying start. That's great. Uh, so, number two, thing that I learned from r slash Formula One on Reddit. In a worrying sign, what track does not currently feature on the FIA's list of licensed tracks? What track does not currently feature... Uh, and it's a bit of a worrying sign that this track is not featured. <laughs> hmm. Um, is it... Oh, what would be a worrying sign? It's either... You're either worried that it's Melbourne um, because, you know, that... Or it could be that it's like... Uh, like Austria because that's the next race. So I'm, gonna, I'm guessing that it's the Spielberg track, Austria. Yeah, the Red Bull Ring, yikes. It's not on mm. the FIA list of licensed tracks right now. Get on that, please, uh, because we're going to race there hopefully soon. <laughs> of all the things that could go wrong and bring this race down, imagine it's because they didn't upgrade the license. Whoops. Um, you're doing very well. Two for two. Uh, let's keep that going. Uh, the next one is, according to Charles Leclerc, what has strengthened during the pandemic? Oh, what has strengthened during the pandemic? Charles Leclerc. Hmm, I'm going to say it's his love for gaming. Oh, you're really close. Love for the simulator, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you half a point. The correct answer is F1 driver friendships as a result oh, of sim racing. Of course. He says the driver friendships have strengthened, presumably also sales of banana suits because he loves those. <laughs> I'm guessing it's the only friendships that he's strengthened though, with Lando Norris and like Greg Russell. <laughs> And, like, and, there's and nobody else. Albon. Ah, oh, who famously beat him this week. Apparently, it was an, mm. an absolutely riveting. I mean, the highlights were great. I'm not watching any sim yeah. racing, Rod. Are you? No. 
indulging. Couldn't, it couldn't interest me less. Um, I tried. I, I guess, just couldn't. There was too much know, faff. Just, yeah, I just don't care. There's no stakes. Who cares? Anyway, um, yeah, the other the other friendships that are probably strengthening are like, you know, the darts championship player that they invited or the, you know, the tennis player. It's like, he's not even a racer. Anyway, um, Zach, next question. The cover of the upcoming F1 2020 game is out. This so-called 70 edition and this, the cover that I saw features Tanya Ricardo and Kimi Raikkonen, uh, and that may only be one variant, but that's the, the version that, w- that was on there. So according to what I learned from r slash Formula One, what was interesting about having Ricardo and Raikkonen on the cover of the 70th edition of F1 2020, the game? Um, neither of them uh, have won a world championship. No, that's not true, because Kimi Raikkonen's won. Sorry. You could argue that Raikkonen's won one, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he's definitely won one. Um, No. uh, (laughs) Immediately, I was like, both their names start with R. No, uh, (laughs) neither of them race for the, like, the big teams. Maybe that's it. Like, Red, they're not racing for, like, Red Bull, um, uh, Mercedes, or Ferrari, and that's really odd. That is odd. But the factoid that I learned from R slash, no, not a factoid. The tidbit that I learned from R slash Formula One. Uh, this is the 70th. Obviously, Formula One's in its 70th year. They're trying to make this big deal. This is the game, the 70th edition. Daniel Ricciardo and Kimi Raikkonen, and if you take their age and add it together, equals 70. Ah, maybe that's They're why. They're the then. only two drivers in the, on the grid that you can do that with. Ah, well, how about that? Mm-mm-mm. Tapping my temple. Good idea. Good thinking. Um, so you're on a good run, but you can make it all up because this last question is worth 10 points. Um, <laughs> due to the pandemic, what streak has been racked up by Mercedes that they hope they can turn around when racing resumes? Oh, what streak has been racked up by Mercedes? Is that their longest time between wins? Yes, 100%. Longest time without a win in the turbo hybrid, hybrid era, around 157 days since Hamilton mm. won in Abu Dhabi. So, yeah, you did that. You scored 13 points out of a possible who cares. Uh, very well done. You win the super quiz. Your trophy is in the mail, I promise. Hopefully yeah. you're home when they come to deliver it. Otherwise, they'll leave a card. What pe- listeners of the show don't know is that there's actually another 10 competitors in every super license super quiz. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it just happens that, yeah, that uh, every single time the co-host actually manages to get in with the buzzer first. We edit out the buzzers yeah. because they're too, like, ugh, too full on for too a podcast listener. Ugh. Yeah, but um, actually, yeah, we... Um, uh, so nobody else has ever won a super license quiz except for the, the, the person on the other... The, the co-host. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good factoid for you. Or tidbit. Yeah, you no, know, it's not a factor. It's a tidbit. Kudos for you for uh, being quick on the buzzer, as always. Uh, you outbuzz everybody every time. I, I always appreciate that effort. Uh, that do you reckon? Fast twitch muscles do you reckon you've got. We've done the same amount of quizzes each. Um, it'd be close. I mean, back in the early days, we used to both do one every week, and then we started trading off. Um, yeah, I, I reckon it'd be that, very close. That we did one each. Yeah. Well, actually, for a while, I was doing whatever quiz I thought up, and then you were doing. Um, Twit pick, pick, pick yeah. challenge, and that was a weekly thing for a while, a racely thing for a while. Mm. Um, but yeah, it would be pretty even. What do you? What's your concern? Um, my concern is that it's actually even, and then maybe you're one race ahead though. So like every week where I give you a quiz, you emerge victorious, and then for that week you're winning, and I'm forever playing catch up because now we do one, we we rotate. Maybe I am behind, and there's no way for me to catch up. Quizzes in a row. No, maybe okay. I like being the underdog. <laughs> There you go. That's that, that's that spirit that I like. Um, well, we've done, uh, done our commentary. We've done our quiz. The only thing that I... I mean, there's not really news. The only thing that I saw, which I thought was interesting, about this potential coming out of the pandemic and going racing is that they're going to test everybody in the grid every two days for the virus. So I thought that was interesting. Um, not much to add to it, really. No real thoughts about it. But I just thought, yeah, okay. You're going to test everyone every two days. That's a lot of tests. Yeah, I wonder... Surely some good antibody tests would get to a point as well where people have got immunity. I know immunity is a difficult thing to nail down right now, mm, yeah. whether there is actually any, any immunity. Um, where are they getting all these tests as well? There's testing shortages in lots of places. I suppose not in a lot of Europe, actually. Um, mm. And so, yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's going to be... I, I, 
I go through totally oscillating. I oscillate between two ideas. <laughs> I'm like, there is absolutely no way that they will be able to do races this year. Where and then other days, I'm like, I mean, with the right measures, if any sport could do it, it would be Formula <laughs> One because you know it's one big circus that moves around. And if you could do it mm. at tracks where there's no people, yeah, if any sport's going to be able to do it, it should be Formula One. There's no real home racing advantage without fans and all that kind of stuff that you get in other sports. So. I don't know. I've got no clue. I hope it comes back soon, but I hope <laughs> yeah. everybody's fine. Like, I just want That's everybody to thing, be super yeah. healthy, but I wanted a race tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. You pretty much pretty much read my mind. Um, yeah, look, I want everyone who is listening to stay healthy. Please take care of each other and, uh, yeah, stay safe. Do the smart thing. Just do the smart thing. Don't do the dumb things. Be like, do what Nikki says. Do the smart things. Yeah, um, the smart yeah things. Zach, any last thoughts before we sign off? No, do the smart things. I mean, it can. I know in London, it kind of feels like we're coming out of lockdown, uh, and it can appear that way, and people can become lax. Um, but I would feel it would feel remiss if I didn't remind people that you know, do what you can in your own country to isolate and stay safe, and do social distancing, and don't take unnecessary risks. I know it can be difficult to not see your friends and all those kinds of things, but just keep in mind the people who are less fortunate and less able to look after their own health than you so you can do your bit by you know staying away from other people yeah and if you're missing your friends um sync up your netflix and watch drive to survive with them and you know and if they if they're like that's fun let's do that again you could say actually uh, i'm busy <laughs> for the rest of this pandemic but what you can do is listen in with your old mates uh rod and zach here's a podcast you can subscribe to so feel free to spread the word um but yeah please do stay safe everybody and uh yeah, we'll be back with another commentary, likely, because we're still, checks my watch, a couple of weeks away from <laughs> uh, any racing. So, yeah, uh, everyone, please stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Um, nothing else to add, so I'll just sign off. Until next time, my name's been Rodney. And my name's been Zachary. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.